All right, we'll start on your right with Matt Weaver, defensive coordinator, Brian Haynes. Hey, coach. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you kind of sat there at the top at linebacker with um, with Aiden and Jalen. I know you obviously have a lot of experience with them. Just wondering what kind of depth you're seeing behind them. Who, maybe who's kind of stepping up to kind of obviously they can't play every snap to kind of give them a little break of time that you feel comfortable putting out there. Yeah, there's been good competition in that linebacker room. Um, guys that guys that are pushing both Jay Walk and Aiden Fisher. Um, Isaiah Bones Jones would be the first one I'd bring up. He's playing really good football right now. I've been pleased with him. I like the way he played in the spring. And he's really built off of that this fall camp so far. He's playing both positions, both Will and Mike. That's not easy to do. You know, there's a lot of content in our playbook right now, and he can handle it quite well. So I've been pleased with him. Uh, Najee Logan has flashes. Uh, Josh Rudolph has flashes. Um, Jeff Utzinger's a walk-on uh, from Cathedral High School. He's having a good camp. Smart kid. Um, knows the system well. So I've been pleased with a number of those guys. Uh, they're pushing those. They're pushing those top two. I asked Coach Shanahan this too, but just in a profession, assistant coaching, where guys tend to move around a lot, try to you know kind of just just take a lot of different experiences. What's kept you with Coach Signetti? You've gone with him, you know, to a lot of different stops. You've stayed with him, just like Coach Shanahan has, just like a number of coaches have. Just just what has you know about that relationship and, and working with and for him has, has made that the right move for you every time. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm very lo loyal to Coach Signetti, and he's been loyal to me. I mean, part of me staying with him is, is the fact that he does believe in me when he has the chance to give me a promotion, um, whether it's I'm you know, going with him from Elon to, to JMU. He you know, put a co-defensive coordinator title uh, out there for me. So I, I think he believes in me. I think he trusts me. I feel the same way about him. Uh, he and I are, are very well aligned with what we believe in philosophically. I mean, we're about tough, physical football teams. Um, we're about football. You know, the relationship part of it is important, but football, X's and O's is, is what he and I do. That's what we do for a living, and, and we bounce ideas off each other. I think we have a great working relationship, and I, I, I like him away from football, too. He's a good guy. We've been together for a long time, and happy to say that. Go on your left, Todd. Ryan, uh, at all three levels of the defense, there's guys that came with you from JMU. Their institutional knowledge of what you want to do as a coach, how does that help you as a coach with the players that you brought in or inherited? And you know, how do they kind of help the players kind of get used to your way of doing things? Yeah, um, the first thing I would say is, is the, the verbiage. Like each time you learn a new system, it's like a new language, right? So the guys that I brought from JMU, they, they already know the language. They speak it fluently. So they were able to kind of, you know, what does a skin mean? Like what does that technique mean? What is, um, what is a mod? There's all these like abbreviations and terms, so so that's the first thing. The second thing is the cultural buy-in, like what what we want, what do Coach Koontz and I believe in with our defense. So they kind of taught the guys like this is how we do it, this is why we do it, and this is why it's important that we do it this way. It's it's a cultural buy-in that they've helped teach those other guys. And I'll say this: the guys that were here before, or the guys that we pulled from other schools, they've been receptive to it, they've been open to it. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of pushback. The guys the guys that are here. Uh, that aren't part of that JMU crew, they know that the JMU guys have had success. They've felt it. They've done it uh, at a championship level. So there's a lot of buy-in right now, so it's a good thing. Owen on your right, and then Jack. Hi, Coach. Just talking about the defensive line group, especially a lot of new faces, a lot of some returners. Just how have you meshed that group together throughout the spring and the fall period, and uh, what's been the biggest kind of growing point for the group as a whole? Uh, yeah, in the spring, um, there were still a lot of injuries, so – uh, we were getting a lot of young guys reps, and then what we got this fall is, you know, James Carpenter showed up. C.J. West has been huge. Um, I think w what you're seeing is the standard of execution has been raised to a new level now. So you're getting a lot better interior line play this fall camp. And then in terms of the edge guys, I mean, Mikhail's been out there every practice. He never misses. He goes hard every single day, every single play. I can't say enough good things about him. Been really pleased with Linnell Carr. I wasn't exactly sure what Linnell was going to be. I had an idea. I know he led the team in sacks last year, but he's a he's a sudden guy off the edge. He's twitchy. It's, it's meshing well. It's not that we had to do too much. I'm just continue pushing the scheme and let those guys find their roles in the scheme. And to be a front guy in this defense, like there's no better place to be, guys. Like You want to be a front guy in a defense that, that kind of philosophically believes in what we believe in. It's really the second level guys that have to make that picture whole. Um, those front level guys have to go eat. And the guys are eating right now. This fall camp's been good. Yeah, uh, Coach Signetti said Monday that it, it's been a handful at times, like trying to protect the passer against your defense, um, just like getting to the quarterback. How do you describe just kind of your approach in teaching, kind of you know rushing the passer? I think you led the nation in tackles for loss, just kind of that aspect of teaching the defense. Yeah, um, 
Well, I, I let Coach Koontz and Coach Buda Williams handle a, a lot of like the, the actual techniques. Um, but I was a, a defensive line guy to, to start my career, so I have a little bit of background there. Um, I'd have to talk for a long time about exactly the things that we do, but uh, we believe in manipulating angles. Um, you know, we do certain stunts and things like that. But also, I, I'm a big fan right now of, of tying in the back end to that. If I can show a picture to a quarterback that is um, uh, this deceptive, that, that that's not true, uh, it, it adds to his clock in times of uh, in terms of identifying what we're in. And I tell the guys all the time, each tenth of a second that we add to his plate is another tenth of a second for Lanell Carr, Mc, uh, Mikhail Kamara, James Carpenter to get home. So it's all about full 11 buy-in, you know, the, the back-end shell, uh, the manipulation of what we do up front. And then ultimately when we blitz, we blitz with a purpose, we blitz with, with, with authority. And there's usually some design behind the blitz, like I believe in layers to blitzes. We don't just run down Main Street and say, I hope we get to the quarterback. Like, throw a layer on that thing, you know, add a wrapper, add a looper. So um, layers and angles. Brian, kind of similar, but not asking you to turn over the whole playbook here, but just what's maybe your approach to defensive play calling? Like how do you, maybe what's it look like for you during the week as you're putting together a game plan? What's it look like for you on game day with making adjustments and, you know, just in game? And how do you get prepared for all of that ahead of the season? Yeah, it's um, when you get into the season, to me, it's, it's more game plan. It's, it's game by game basis. What does this team want to do? Who are their, their, their players? And, and also, I, I like to see like, what are their weaknesses? Like, are they, are they struggling at, at left tackle? Um, I incorporate all those things. I want to attack their weaknesses. Um, I want to weaponize my, my good players. So if they have a bad center, then you know, James Carpenter is going to be a problem. How, how, do I, how do I do that? How do I get that done? Um, so, so that's what it is for me during the week. I, I'm identifying their weaknesses and their strengths. And then mid-game adjustments is I've been in this scheme for long enough to, to understand like, the holes in it. You know, the warts in it. Even in the playbook, it, it mentions to the players, like, what is the weakness of this defense? So they're also aware schematically of the weaknesses. And um, if they're able to punch holes in, in what I have called, then I'll get away from it. I'll get away from it. We have enough content. I can, we can change calls. We can change calls. Go to a different scheme. Yeah, right. Um, at JMU last year, you guys didn't tackle uh, in the fall, at least fall camp. Um, seemed to be following a similar model, only tackled once in the spring. What kind of challenges does that present? Uh, for you and how you kind of overcome the team kind of week one not not having their fundamentals down or, or being kind of caught off guard a little bit yeah the main challenge for me is what I tell my linebacker room like I don't know if you would have made that play or not the unknown is the challenge um, that being said I we do a lot of thud and I tell my, my linebackers, thud is tackle without the finishing component like if you're getting your feet in a good position to thud up a ball carrier with body control you're going to tackle that man, you know. So if you're a good thud team, I think you're going to be a good tackling team. If you look at the years past at JMU, we've been good tackling teams. There's not a lot of missed tackles out there because we teach angles, footwork, um, how to tackle, um, whether it's vice, using your leverage piece. Like there's a lot more to tackling than just bring that guy to the ground. And for me, it all starts with like the posture of the feet and how you enter the ball carrier, you know, how you, how you frame up the ball carrier. So we're working really hard on teaching that. And then all you have to add is the finishing component to actually bring guys to the ground. Yes. Coach over here. I'm, I'm kind of curious with, with your passion for coaching. Do you find yourself like at dinner or taking a walk or something coming up with unique ways to say attack the quarterback or, or attack the, the offense? Uh, I'm just kind of curious on, on how you approach that and if it's like a 24-7 with you. Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, yes, it is. Um, I, it's not a challenge for me. You know, I, I'm kind of obsessed with the game, so I'm okay with it. You know, my girlfriend's probably not. She probably wants to talk about normal dinner conversation. But, I mean, if there's a good two-latch pressure out there that I think up, then I'm going to want to talk about it. And she usually hears me out, so she's a good sport about it. Mike on your right, then Daniel. Yeah, Coach, you, were, uh, you played a game here with Ball State. You were a GA here. What, what is meaningfully different about the program, facilities, all that, uh, that, that you notice now that, you know, maybe wasn't here before? Yeah, facility-wise, the locker room, locker room is great now. It was a uh, locker room before it was even a different spot over here, so that's much improved. The weight room with Coach Derek Owings is, is, is really nice now. That's a, that's a big improvement. The food down at the, the south end zone is, is better. In terms of outside of facilities, it's, uh, it's the buy-in. The culture feels a little bit different this time than last time. Uh, I think it was year three for, for Coach Wilson when I got here. and. Um, yeah, not to say that, that it had a losing feel to it, but I don't know if the program was ready to take off. I don't feel that way anymore. I don't feel that way anymore. I feel like something special could happen. Yeah, you kind of mentioned, you know, the obsession that you have. Um, I want to say what Signetti mentioned Monday, 
that the way that your mind works is, is it's almost like-minded with how his works as far as whenever he leaves here, his mind is still here. You know, when you kind of reflect back on like 2014, 2015, when you first started working, you know, with him, when did you maybe, you know, realize that you guys shared that, that, that you know, same like-minded approach, I guess? Yeah, it was the first time I met Coach Signetti in person. It was, um, it was my, my interview. I was leaving Ohio State. I, I GA'd here um, uh, in 2012, and then I went to uh, Ohio State in 2013. Uh, leaving Ohio State, I, I wanted to get back into coaching. So uh, my brother was working for Coach Signetti as the office coordinator at IUP. So my job interview with Coach Signetti at IUP was to go over to his house where he opened the door, pulled me into the foyer, and we talked ball for an hour and 25 minutes. You know, it was there was probably that that one uh, like interview, typical interview question, like yeah, tell me a little bit about yourself. After that, it was ball, and um, I'm like that. Like I, I I enjoy that. That that was a good interview for me. That was a fun interview for me. So it was day one. I recognized, oh, this guy's this guy's a, this is a ball coach. You know, this is a ball guy, and that's that's what we are. I want to ask about Coach Kuntz. Obviously, he's an Indiana guy um, from Indianapolis. He spent time here as a GA as well. Had a lot of success coaching that defensive line at James Madison. Just what about his his style, his approach to coaching defensive line play works from your perspective as somebody who's pulling together all the pieces of a defense. Yeah, um, I had gotten no Coach Coons. You know, I, I was aware that, that, that he was a GA here after me. Um, some of the buddies that I was GAs with here became friends with him. So, so I knew Coons from a long time back, um, tracked his career. We stayed in contact. Um, I knew that he and I were aligned. We had talked enough ball to, for, for me to understand that he was kind of in the same boat as me. And then, you know, as I started calling around for D-line coaches, he was one of my first calls. And I um, mean, just good conversation. Just philosophically, if you have ball guys, you can recognize them pretty quickly. Um, it's terminology, it's the way that they view things. It's an openness to new scheme and new ideas. Like he and I are, we bounce ideas off of each other. You know, it's a good working relationship, good clean communication. And when we disagree about something, we communicate why. So. Yeah, uh, another guy that I'm just, I'm so happy he's here with me. You know, he coaches the hell out of those guys, and the coaching points that he has are always almost the exact same thing that I would say. You know, that, that happens frequently. Like, man, I would have told the nose guard this, and then I hear it come out of his mouth. I'm like, he and I are together. So thankful for Coach Koontz, and yeah, me and him have been together for a while now, and good working relationship for sure. Great. Thanks, Coach. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. Take care.